Hey everyone, hope you're having a great Wednesday. Just wanted to take a few minutes and you know, give you some thoughts or maybe something to use for your family devotion uh, tonight. Uh, hopefully that you're still spending time together as a family in God's Word. Um, my family and I, we're actually at the beach. I know I hate to say that, but uh, we've been at the beach since earlier this week and we hope to come home uh, Friday, but we just wanted to uh, take advantage of this time and uh, get away and enjoy some sunshine and some warmer temperatures uh, but again, hopefully we'll be back at the end of this week. But again, I wanted to just take a few moments and share with you some thoughts about growing as a Christian, about becoming a better disciple, a better uh, spouse, uh, a better parent. Um, you know, so many times we say we want to be a better version of ourselves. You know, I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better preacher. I want to be a better disciple. Uh, but often we don't do the things necessary to want to be that better, whatever it is we're trying to be. Um, you know, it's... Um, an athlete, if an athlete says they want to run faster, well, they have to do things to make themselves run faster. They have to push themselves. Uh, they have to do the things necessary to improve their speed. If not, it's just talk, right? Again, the same thing is with our Christian lives. Um, you know, too many times we think that, you know, my Christian faith or to grow as a Christian, I just need to go to church more. And as important as that's needed and as much as we miss that right now, that's not necessarily what we're talking about. Um, you know, the time that we grow as a Christian is out into the everyday life, everyday world. Um, that's where our faith is tested. That's where our faith can grow. That's where we can do the things necessary to help our faith grow. So again, just wanted to share a few things uh, that I believe that we can apply to our lives and help us to be the better version of ourselves that sometimes we really want to be. Uh, so again, here's some things. If you really want to grow as a Christian, number one, you'll learn more about God. So this is probably the most important, but when you love something, you get to know that something, right? Or that someone. Uh, you know, imagine being married and not knowing anything about your spouse. Um, what that is, is an indication of a lack of love. Uh, that relationship would never flourish if you don't get to know that person. Again, when you love someone or something, you get to know that someone or that something. When we don't know Jesus, when we don't understand Jesus and when we don't read about Jesus, um, when we don't know his gospel, when we don't grow in Christ Jesus, then either our love for him is immature or to be honest, it's non-existent. Number two, if you want to grow, you'll learn to read. Now, I know a lot of people aren't big readers. Growing up, I wasn't a big reader. I didn't like to read. I've actually had to, over the last several years, kind of retrain myself to learn to love to read because uh, that's how I learn. And I know that's how I, um, I must uh, get to know God is re by reading his word. But, and we must read the Bible. We must read the Bible, but we also need to read other books. There's a lot of great books out there, spiritual books, uh, of the wisdom of others, of the knowledge of others. Um, you know, and I also always encourage people, don't just read what you believe, you know, you need to understand why other people believe what they believe. You need to understand why there are so many denominations out there. You know, what are they thinking? Um, you know, what, what are they, you know, what are they teaching? You need to know those things. Um, you know, we never learn if we simply only read things written by those who just think like us, who act like us, who believe like us. And I've always encouraged people to read with an open mind and to read with an open Bible. Um, we need to read the Bible more. We need to study God's word more. Um, we need to be like the Bereans, right? Who received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily uh, to see if these things were so. Uh, so they checked up on the teachers. They checked up on themselves. And again, that's Acts 17 and verse 11. Uh, number one, if you want to grow, this kind of has a lot to do with uh, reading, but if you want to grow, you'll feed yourself. See, a lot of Christians wait on someone to feed them spiritually. Um, they want the preacher, they want the Bible class teacher, they want someone to teach you know, their kids. And so instead of developing your own, own faith, you're believing what others tell you. Uh, and again, this has everything or a lot to do with you know, reading for yourself. 
don't depend on someone else to teach you. Don't depend on someone else to, to show you what truth is, but instead you read God's word, you develop your own faith. That way when the storm does come, when the testing of our faith does come, we have it within ourselves to defend. We have it within ourselves to keep our faith strong and we don't have to depend on someone else to make sure that our faith is, is sturdy or it's, it's foundational. Um, another one, if you want to grow, you'll accept and you'll learn from correction. Now, when someone says something, even the slight negative, we have a tendency to respond with, you know, mind your own business, or, you know, you can't judge me, or, you know, Bible says judge not, or that's your opinion, or, you know, that's the last time I'm going to talk to you. How will we ever grow if we do not listen to the correction, to the rebuke, to the advice of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you're like me, you're probably a lot better at dishing it out than you are accepting it. Solomon wrote, a rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. That's Proverbs 17, 10. If you want to grow, you'll learn to confess your sins. Now, I am at I am always been horrible at confessing my sins to other people. Um, why? Because I feel that, and I'm, you might be like me, that you feel that others will think less of you if they know that what you really struggle with. Uh, because we want to be liked, we want to be approved. Uh, that's, that's human nature. But the truth is, I always think more highly of someone when they confess their struggles. You know, confession is not a sign of weakness, as so many of us may have been taught or may, we may have believed for so long, but confession is a sign of strength. It's a sign of courage. Uh, it's a sign of faith. Um, you know, find a close brother or sister. You, we all have those people that we're close to, and you need to tell them the things that you struggle with. Ask them to pray with you. Ask them to pray for you and with you. Uh, let, let them know that you'd like for them to hold you accountable. You know, but you know, don't use them as a crutch. <clears throat> but um, you know, if they fail to check up on you and you sin, don't don't blame them. But go to them again and say, "Hey, I messed up again." And confess to them uh, and ask them to pray for you. Now, I'm not talking about confessing them like we're confessing to God, but the Bible does say, "Confess your sins one to another, and pray for one another that you may be healed." There's a strength. There is an advantage. Uh, there's a lot to be gained from confessing our sins one to another. Uh, and then lastly, if you want to grow, you'll ask for advice from wiser Christians. You know, in nearly, in almost nearly every church, there are Christians who have raised faithful kids. There are Christians who have struggled raising faithful kids. Uh, there are Christians that have been ma happily married for decades. They have ran successful Christian businesses for many, many years uh, with integrity. Uh, they, have done, they have done almost everything you hope to do in your lifetime, and yet many of us leave that wisdom, we, we leave it empty. Uh, we leave it untapped because we are too proud to ask for advice. Most Christians would be thrilled, absolutely thrilled, for you to go to them and say, hey, I need your advice. Uh, I need your thoughts on this. Some may try to turn you down, but that's probably out of humility. Uh, but those are just the kind of people that you want advising you. So I encourage you to reach out to those people who've been there, to reach out to those people who've done that, uh, and to get their advice on the situations and the circumstances that you find in your life uh, along the way. Proverbs 15, 22 says, without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. So the question is this, you know, do we really want uh, to grow? Um, remember, if we want to grow, and if we want to be better tomorrow than we are today, we are going to have to be intentional about doing the things that will help us grow. This isn't a complete list, but I'm sure that you've got things in your life that you know you need to be doing to grow more as a Christian, those steps that you can take uh, to become a better disciple, a better spouse, a better parent, uh, a better member of the community, a better employee or a better employer. Um, you know, I know I've got a long way to go, and um, I, I often get tired of just, if, if you know me, I'm not one to just sit around and talk about something. And if we're going to talk about and if we're going to do it, then let's do it. And, um, you know, I'm ready to go to work. I'm ready to be that better person, that better Christian, that better disciple. How about you?
Behold.